Paul Anthony Samuelson, the 15th of May 1915 to the 13th of December 2009, was an American economist and the first American to win the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. The Swedish Royal Academies stated, when awarding the prize in 1970, that he has done more than any other contemporary economist to raise the level of scientific analysis in economic theory. Economic historian Randall E. Parker has called him the father of modern economics, and the New York Times considered him to be the foremost academic economist of the 20th century. Samuelson was likely the most influential economist of the later 20th century. In 1996, when he was awarded the National Medal of Science, considered to be America's top science honor, President Bill Clinton commended Samuelson for his fundamental contributions to economic science for over 60 years. Samuelson considered mathematics to be the natural language for economists and contributed significantly to the mathematical foundations of economics with his book Foundations of Economic Analysis. He was author of the best-selling economics textbook of all time, Economics, an Introductory Analysis, first published in 1948. It was the second American textbook that attempted to explain the principles of Keynesian economics. It is now in its 19th edition, having sold nearly 4 million copies in 40 languages, including Russian, French, Greek, Slovak, Chinese, Portuguese, German, Spanish, Polish, Japanese, Czech, Vietnamese, Hungarian, Indonesian, Swedish, Croatian, Dutch, Turkish, Hebrew, Italian, and Arabic. James Paterba, former head of MIT's Department of Economics, noted that by his book, Samuelson, leaves an immense legacy, as a researcher and a teacher, as one of the giants on whose shoulders every contemporary economist stands." He entered the University of Chicago at age 16, during the depths of the Great Depression, and received his Ph.D. in economics from Harvard. After graduating, he became an assistant professor of economics at Massachusetts Institute of Technology when he was 25 years of age and a full professor at age 32. In 1966, he was named Institute Professor, MIT's highest faculty honor. He spent his career at MIT where he was instrumental in turning its Department of Economics into a world-renowned institution by attracting other noted economists to join the faculty, including Robert M. Solo, Franco Modigliani, Robert C. Merton, Joseph E. Stiglitz, and Paul Krugman, all of whom went on to win Nobel Prizes. He served as an advisor to Presidents John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson, and was a consultant to the United States Treasury, the Bureau of the Budget and the President's Council of Economic Advisors. Samuelson wrote a weekly column for Newsweek magazine along with Chicago school economist Milton Friedman, where they represented opposing sides. Samuelson, as a self-described, cafeteria Keynesian, claimed taking the Keynesian perspective but only accepting what he felt was good in it. By contrast, Friedman represented the monetarist perspective. Samuelson died on 13 December 2009, at the age of 94. Biography Samuelson was born in Gary, Indiana, on 15 May 1915, to Frank Samuelson, a pharmacist, and the Ellen A. Lipton. His family, he later said, was made up of upwardly mobile Jewish immigrants from Poland who had prospered considerably in World War I, because Gary was a brand new steel town when my family went there." In 1923, Samuelson moved to Chicago where he graduated from Hyde Park High School now Hyde Park Career Academy. He then studied at the University of Chicago and received his Bachelor of Arts degree there in 1935. He said he was born as an economist, at eight. 00 a.m. on January 2, 1932, in the University of Chicago classroom. The lecture mentioned the cause was on the British economist Thomas Malthus, who most famously studied population growth and its effects. Samuelson felt there was a dissonance between neoclassical economics and the way the system seemed to behave, he said Henry Simons and Frank Knight were a big influence on him. He next completed his Master of Arts degree in 1936, and his Doctor of Philosophy in 1941 at Harvard University. He won the David A. Wells Prize in 1941 for writing the best doctoral dissertation at Harvard University in Economics, for a thesis titled, Foundations of Analytical Economics, which later turned into Foundations of Economic Analysis. 
As a graduate student at Harvard, Samuelson studied economics under Joseph Schumpeter, Wassily Leontief, Gottfried Haberler, and the American Keynes, Alvin Hansen. Samuelson moved to MIT as an assistant professor in 1940 and remained there until his death. Samuelson's family included many well known economists, including brother Robert Summers, sister in law Anita Summers, brother in law Kenneth Arrow, and nephew Larry Summers. During his seven decades as an economist, Samuelson's professional positions included Assistant Professor of Economics at MIT, 1940, Associate Professor, 1944. Member of the Radiation Laboratory 1944-45. Professor of International Economic Relations part -time at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy in 1945. Guggenheim Fellowship from 1948-49. Professor of Economics at MIT beginning in 1947 and Institute Professor beginning in 1962. Vernon F. Taylor Visiting Distinguished Professor at Trinity University Texas in Spring 1989. Death Samuelson died after a brief illness on December 13, 2009, at the age of 94. His death was announced by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. James M. Paterba, an economics professor at MIT and the president of the National Bureau of Economic Research, commented that Samuelson "...leaves an immense legacy, as a researcher and a teacher, as one of the giants on whose shoulders every contemporary economist stands." Susan Hockfield, the president of MIT, said that Samuelson transformed everything he touched, the theoretical foundations of his field, the way economics was taught around the world, the ethos and stature of his department, the investment practices of MIT, and the lives of his colleagues and students. <laughs> Fields of interest As professor of economics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Samuelson worked in many fields, including Consumer theory, where he pioneered the revealed preference approach, which is a method by which one can discern a consumer's utility function, by observing their behavior. Rather than postulate a utility function or a preference ordering, Samuelson imposed conditions directly on the choices made by individuals, their preferences as revealed by their choices. Welfare economics, in which he popularized the Lindahl Bowen Samuelson conditions, criteria for deciding whether an action will improve welfare, and demonstrated in 1950 the insufficiency of a national income index to reveal which of two social options was uniformly outside the other's feasible possibility function, collected scientific papers, v. 2, ch. 77, Fisher, 1987, p. 236. Capital theory, where he is known for 1958 consumption loans model and a variety of turnpike theorems and involved in Cambridge capital controversy. Finance theory, in which he is known for the efficient market hypothesis. Public finance theory, in which he is particularly known for his work on determining the optimal allocation of resources in the presence of both public goods and private goods. International economics, where he influenced the development of two important international trade models, the Balassa Samuelson effect, and the Heckscher Olin model with the Stolper Samuelson theorem. Macroeconomics, where he popularized the overlapping generations model as a way to analyze economic agents' behavior across multiple periods of time, collected scientific papers, v. 1, ch. 21, and contributed to formation of the neoclassical synthesis. Market economics, Samuelson believed in regulated markets have drawbacks, he stated, "...free markets do not stabilize themselves. Zero regulating is vastly suboptimal to rational regulating. Libertarianism is its own worst enemy." Samuelson strongly criticized Friedman and Friedrich von Hayek arguing their opposition to state intervention, "...tells us something about them rather than something about Genghis Khan or Franklin Roosevelt." It is paranoid to warn against inevitable slippery slopes, once individual commercial freedoms are in any way infringed upon. <laughs> Impact Samuelson is considered one of the founders of Neo-Keynesian economics and a seminal figure in the development of neoclassical economics. 
In awarding him the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences the committee stated, More than any other contemporary economist, Samuelson has helped to raise the general analytical and methodological level in economic science. He has simply rewritten considerable parts of economic theory. He has also shown the fundamental unity of both the problems and analytical techniques in economics, partly by a systematic application of the methodology of maximization for a broad set of problems. This means that Samuelson's contributions range over a large number of different fields. He was also essential in creating the neoclassical synthesis, which ostensibly incorporated Keynesian and neoclassical principles and still dominates current mainstream economics. In 2003, Samuelson was one of the ten Nobel Prize-winning economists signing the Economist's statement opposing the Bush tax cuts. Topic. Aphorisms and quotations Stanislaw Ulam once challenged Samuelson to name one theory in all of the social sciences which is both true and nontrivial. Several years later, Samuelson responded with David Ricardo's theory of comparative advantage, that it is logically true need not be argued before a mathematician, that is not trivial as attested by the thousands of important and intelligent men who have never been able to grasp the doctrine for themselves or to believe it after it was explained to them. For many years, Samuelson wrote a column for Newsweek. One article included Samuelson's most quoted remark and a favorite economics joke, to prove that Wall Street is an early omen of movements still to come in GNP, commentators quote economic studies alleging that market downturns predicted four out of the last five recessions. That is an understatement. Wall Street indexes predicted nine out of the last five recessions. And its mistakes were beauties. In the early editions of his famous, best-selling economics textbook Paul Samuelson joked that GDP falls when a man marries his maid. See The Economist, The Trouble with GDP. Topic. Paul Davidson on Samuelson as a Keynesian Samuelson consistently maintained he was a Keynesian, albeit a cafeteria Keynesian, and eventually, in later editions of his seminal textbook, even a post-Keynesian. However, Paul Davidson rejected Samuelson's claim, pointing out discrepancies between John Maynard Keynes's system of analysis and Samuelson's. Samuelson claimed that Keynes's analysis must be based on the rigidity of wages and prices in a Walrasian system. Specifically, Samuelson stated that, in his view, Keynes's analysis is a very slow adjusting disequilibrium system where the full Walrasian equilibrium was not realized. In the short run because, according to Samuelson, prices and wages do not adjust rapidly enough to an exogenous shock. Yet, Keynes, as a student of Alfred Marshall, had based the general theory's microfoundations on Marshall's microeconomic analysis and not Walrasian analysis. Keynes had explicitly denounced walrus approach as wrong. Keynes argued that only in a money-using, entrepreneur economy, where the future is uncertain and, therefore, cannot be reliably predicted would money and all other liquid assets always be non-neutral, because these assets are used as store for savings. Keynes, essentially, rejected the axiom of ergodicity in economics, since he viewed every economy as a system moving through calendar time from an irrevocable past to an uncertain and statistically impossible to predict future. Yet, Samuelson, in an article published in 1969, argued that the ergodic hypothesis axiom is a necessary foundation if economics is to be hard science. Samuelson was claiming as late as 1986 that we Keynesians always assumed that the Keynesian underemployment equilibrium floated on a substructure of administered prices and imperfect competition, stating that there was no need to formalize this requirement of rigidity. Yet, Keynes showed, using Marshallian microfoundations, that a less than full employment equilibrium could exist in a purely competitive economy with freely flexible wages and prices. Topic. Publications Topic. Foundations of economic analysis Samuelson's book Foundations of Economic Analysis 1946 is considered his magnum opus. It is derived from his doctoral dissertation, and was inspired by the classical thermodynamic methods. The book proposes to 
Examine underlying analogies between central features in theoretical and applied economics and Study how operationally meaningful theorems can be derived with a small number of analogous methods p. 3, in order to derive a general theory of economic theories. Samuelson, 1983, p. XXVI. The book showed how these goals could be parsimoniously and fruitfully achieved, using the language of the mathematics applied to diverse subfields of economics. The book proposes two general hypotheses as sufficient for its purposes. Maximizing behavior of agents including consumers as to utility and business firms as to profit and economic systems including a market and an economy in stable equilibrium in the first tenet his views presented the idea that all actors whether firms or consumers are striving to maximize something they could be attempting to maximize profits utility or wealth but it did not matter because their efforts to improve their well-being would provide a basic model for all actors in an economic system his second tenet was focused on providing insight on the workings of equilibrium in an economy. Generally in a market, supply would equal demand. However, he urged that this might not be the case and that the important thing to look at was a system's natural resting point. Foundations presents the question of how an equilibrium would react when it is moved from its optimal point. Samuelson was also influential in providing explanations on how the changes in certain factors can affect an economic system. For example, he could explain the economic effect of changes in taxes or new technologies. In the course of analysis, comparative statics, the analysis of changes in equilibrium of the system that result from a parameter change of the system is formalized and clearly stated. The chapter on welfare economics attempts to give a brief but fairly complete survey of the whole field of welfare economics. Samuelson, 1947, p. 252. It also exposits on and develops what became commonly called the Bergson-Samuelson social welfare function. It shows how to represent in the maximization calculus all real-valued economic measures of any belief system that is required to rank consistently different feasible social configurations in an ethical sense as better than, worse than, or indifferent to each other p. 221. Topic. Economics Samuelson is also author and since 1985 co-author of an influential principles textbook, Economics, first published in 1948, now in its 19th edition. The book has been translated into 41 languages and sold over 4 million copies. It is considered the best-selling economics textbook in history. Samuelson was once quoted as saying, let those who will write the nation's laws if I can write its textbooks." Written in the shadow of the Great Depression and the Second World War, it helped to popularize the insights of John Maynard Keynes. A main focus was how to avoid, or at least mitigate, the recurring slumps in economic activity. Samuelson wrote. It is not too much to say that the widespread creation of dictatorship and the resulting World War II stemmed in no small measure from the world's failure to meet this basic economic problem the Great Depression, adequately. This reflected the concern of Keynes himself with the economic causes of war and the importance of economic policy in promoting peace. Samuelson's influential textbook has been criticized for including comparative growth rates between the United States and the Soviet Union that were inconsistent with historical GNP differences. The 1967 edition extrapolates the possibility of Soviet US real GNP parity between 1977 and 1995. Each subsequent edition extrapolated a date range further in the future until those graphs were dropped from the 1985 edition. In 1989, Samuelson commented on the economics of the Soviet Union and Marxism. Contrary to what many skeptics had earlier believed, the Soviet economy is proof that a socialist, command economy can function and even thrive. The revolutions of 1989 happened during the same year and the Soviet Union broke up two years later. Samuelson's book was the second one that attempted to introduce to a wider audience Keynesian economics, yet by far the most successful one. Canadian economist Laurie Tarshish, who had been a student attending Keynes's lectures at Harvard in the 1930s, published in 1947 an introductory textbook that incorporated his Tarshish's lecture notes, titled The Elements of Economics. It was attacked by trustees of, and donors, to American colleges and universities as preaching a socialist heresy. 
William F. Buckley Jr. attacked the Tarshish analysis as communist inspired. Topic: Other publications. There are 388 papers in Samuelson's collected scientific papers. Stanley Fisher, 1987, p. 234, writes that taken together they are unique in their verve, breadth of economic and general knowledge, mastery of setting, and generosity of allusions to predecessors." Samuelson was co-editor, along with William A. Barnett, of Inside the Economist's Mind, Conversations with Eminent Economists Blackwell Publishing, 2007, a collection of interviews with notable economists of the 20th century. Memberships. <inaudible> 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 Member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, National Academy of Sciences, Fellow of Royal Society of London Fellow of the American Philosophical Society and the British Academy President 1965 of the International Economic Association Member and past president 1961 of the American Economic Association Member of the Editorial Board and Past President 1951 of the Econometric Society Fellow, Council Member and Past Vice President of the Royal Economic Society. Member of Phi Beta Kappa Topic. List of publications Samuelson, Paul A. 1947, Enlarged ed. 1983. Foundations of Economic Analysis, Harvard University Press. Samuelson, Paul A. 1948, Economics, An Introductory Analysis, ISBN 0-07-074741-5, with William D. Nordhaus since 1985, 2009, 19th ed., McGraw-Hill. ISBN 978-0-07-126383-2. Samuelson, Paul A. 1952. Economic Theory and Mathematics, An Appraisal. American Economic Review, 42 2, pp. 56–66. Samuelson, Paul A. 1954. The Pure Theory of Public Expenditure. Review of Economics and Statistics. 36 4, 387–89. Doi 10.2307/1925895. Samuelson, Paul A. 1958. Linear Programming and Economic Analysis with Robert Dorfman and Robert M. Solo, McGraw Hill. Chapter preview links. Samuelson, Paul A. 1960. Efficient Paths of Capital Accumulation in Terms of the Calculus of Variations. In Arrow, Kenneth J., Carlin, Samuel, Supace, Patrick, Mathematical Models in the Social Sciences, 1959, Proceedings of the First Stanford Symposium, Stanford Mathematical Studies in the Social Sciences, IV, Stanford, California, Stanford University Press, pp. 77-88, ISBN 9780804700200, Samuelson, Paul A. 1982. Keynes' Tableau Economique as a theorist would formulate it today. In Meek, Ronald, author, Bradley, Ian C., editor, Howard, Michael C., editor, Classical and Marxian Political Economy, Essays in Honor of Ronald L. Meek, London, Macmillan, pp. 45-78, ISBN 9780333321. Samuelson, Paul A. 1980. The Collected Scientific Papers of Paul A. Samuelson, MIT Press. Preview links for Volume 1-3 below. Contents links for Volume 4-7, Samuelson, Paul A. 1966, Volume 1, 1937 mid-1964. Samuelson, Paul A. 1966, Volume 2, 1937 mid-1964. Samuelson, Paul A. 1972, Volume 3, mid 1964 1970. Samuelson, Paul A. 1977, Volume 4, 1971 to 76. Samuelson, Paul A. 1986, Volume 5, 1977 to 1985. Description. Samuelson, Paul A. 2011, Volume. 
6, 1986-2009. Description. Samuelson, Paul A. 2011, Vol. 7, 1986-2009, Paul A. Samuelson Papers, 1930s-2010, Rubinstein Library, Duke University. Samuelson, Paul A. 2007, Inside the Economist's Mind, Conversations with Eminent Economists with William A. Barnett, Blackwell Publishing, ISBN 1-4051-5917-0 Samuelson, Paul A. 2002, Paul Samuelson and the Foundations of Modern Economics, Transaction Publishers, ISBN 978-0-76-580114-2 Topic. See also Samuelson's inequality Samuelson's iceberg transport cost model Keynesian economics New Keynesian economics Neo-Keynesian economics Neoclassical economics Topic. References Topic. Further reading Dixit, Avinash Paul Samuelson's Legacy. Annual Review of Economics, Annual Reviews, 4 to 1 minus 31, doi, 10.1146, Anarev Economics 080511 minus 110957 Fisher, Stanley Samuelson, Paul Anthony. The New Palgrave, A Dictionary of Economics, London, Macmillan, 4, pp. 234-41, ISBN 0-935859-10-1. Silk, Leonard The Economists, New York, Basic Books, ISBN 0-465-01810-6. Sobel, Robert The Worldly Economists, New York, Free Press, ISBN 0 2 929780 x Fussfeld, Daniel R. 2002. The Neoclassical Synthesis. The Age of the Economist 9th ed., Boston, Addison Wesley, pp. 198-201, ISBN 0-321-08812-3. External links Paul Samuelson at the Mathematics Genealogy Project Biography at the Nobel E. Museum 1970 Press Release, Nobel Prize in Economics Presentation speech by Professor Asar Lindbeck, Stockholm School of Economics, Award Ceremony, the Bank of Sweden Prize in Economic Sciences in Memory of Alfred Nobel, 1970 A History of Economic Thought Biography, 2004 Paul Anthony Samuelson 1915 to 2009 The Concise Encyclopedia of Economics Library of Economics and Liberty 2nd ed Liberty Fund 2009 Paul Samuelson Yale Honorans Biography May 2005 Nobel winning economist Paul A Samuelson dies at age 94 MIT News the 13th of December 2009 Appearances on C-SPAN Paul Samuelson Publications indexed by Google Scholar. Paul A. Samuelson. JSTOR.